The lightweight nature of the quadlock system makes it ideal for the simultaneous monolithic pour of the footings and wall. A monolithic pour is used for two reasons. One, it eliminates the need for multiple trips of the pumping equipment, and secondly, it eliminates the cold joint between the footing and wall. Use two by materials for footing forms and at least 50% more stakes than normal. If the wall is higher than four feet, Make the footing extra wide to allow pouring from each side between the walls and footing forms. Before the first grade is set, cut rot-resistant 1x4 spreaders and attach them to the 2x footing forms at maximum 3-foot intervals. Set the footing forms to grade and secure into place with stakes. Strike the building line on top of the 1x4 spreaders with a chalk line. Now fasten the metal track to the 1x4 spreaders using the chalk line as a guide with screws through the metal track. A self-tapping screw works best. Cut wooden spacers to set the inside track and fasten to the 1x4 spreaders. In this particular case, pre-cutting the panels was required to match the footing elevation. Brace the wall as you normally would by screwing bracing to the ties. On walls four feet and under, fill the footing from the top of the wall. On walls higher than four feet, fill the footing first from the sides, pouring through the gap left between the quad lock panels and the footing forms. Space the arrival of concrete trucks to allow a few extra minutes of set time for the footings before pouring the walls. When the footings begin to set, continue the pour in the walls. Wall width transitions are easily accomplished by using the quad lock plus panels on the transition layer. When incorporating wall width transition in your project for transitioning from one wall thickness to another, it is important to follow these suggestions. Where transition occurs, only build a maximum of two feet above the transition and pour a maximum of 16 inches above the transition. Ensure foam interlocks and the slots are covered to protect them and keep concrete off for ease of continuing on after the pour. A clear advantage of quad lock is the ability to form brick ledges using the special quad lock brick ledge tie or by combining multiple wall cavity sizes. If using the brick ledge tie, the lower portion of the wall should be a 12 inch wall cavity or stepped out to 12 inches using quad lock plus panels. At the elevation where a brick ledge is desired, cut the knobs off the outside panel and insert the black brick ledge ties at the normal 12 inch spacing along the wall. Secure the outside of the brick ledge ties by placing metal track over the top of the panels and tie ends. Now place panels on the upper flanges of the brick ledge ties to form a six inch cavity wall and continue to the desired height. When pouring a brick ledge built in this fashion, pour concrete four to six inches higher than the level of the ledge and make sure concrete is consolidated to the outside of the ledge. Strike off excess concrete from the top of the ledge and wait a few minutes until the first lift begins to set. Pouring concrete at too high a slump in this instant will result in spillage, so check slump carefully and allow for set time. Brick ledge ties can also be used to create a solid ledge to support floor systems when placed to face the inside of the building. If transitions other than 12 inches to 6 inch cavities are needed, start your wall with a larger cavity size and step the wall back to form the ledge using one of the methods shown here and detailed in the product manual. In this method, wire top ties are used in conjunction with narrower plastic ties to form a wall width transition and brick ledge.
Brace the transition level with 1x4s as shown. Use 12 inch ties on the bottom row for a 3.5 inch brick ledge. An alternate method would be to screw a 14.5 inch strip of forming plywood to the outside of the ties. Simply pour to the top of the plywood level. Then continue the wall from that level with a second pour. One of the easiest ways to construct a ledger in a quadlock wall is by pre-installing special engineered brackets available through quadlock. To install the brackets, use a laser level to determine the elevation of the ledger, usually the top of floors or roof joists. Strike the line with a chalk line on the surface of the panels. Insert the fixed portion of the ledger bracket through the foam either at a vertical seam or through a cut made with a drywall saw at spacing determined by the project engineer. Try to avoid matching the layout of floor or roof joists that will be installed later. The ledger bracket is designed to be securely embedded in the concrete inside the wall. After the concrete is poured, recheck and chalk the elevation of the ledger and the layout pattern of the brackets. Use the chalk line as a guide for elevation. You can use the tie flanges to temporarily tack the ledger in place while fastening. Transfer that layout pattern to the ledger material and fasten the J-shaped portion of the bracket to the ledger board. Fasten the assembled ledger to the fixed brackets using self-tapping screws provided. Ledger brackets can also be used for attachment of interior walls. If using alternate means of ledger construction, consult the Quadlock product manual. For installation of conduit before concrete is poured, mark the position of the boxes, cut the foam away, and insert the plastic boxes into the wall and spray foam them into position. Install conduit runs according to your electrical layout. Contact Quadlock regarding the specially designed PlastiLock ICF boxes shown here. Electrical wiring not already placed in conduit can be added after the concrete is poured. Mark the location of the electrical boxes, cut and remove the foam. Make sure to mechanically anchor the box to the concrete. Cut the chases for the wire deep enough to satisfy the code with an electric chainsaw or hot knife. Set the wire into the box and run it along the chase. Spot foam the wire in place at three foot intervals. Leave wire runs exposed for inspection. After inspection, you can fill the void with spray foam to retain the wall's optimum insulation value. Where permitted, plumbing can be treated in a similar way. Cut the foam away and fasten the pipe to the concrete. Plumbing chases can be created by using oversized plastic pipe as shown here. Wire the pipe into place and with a felt pen, mark the diameter of the pipe on the outside of the wall. Always make sure the foam is covered with the required thermal barrier. For attaching drywall, first note where the plastic flanges are. You can apply an adhesive if you choose, otherwise hold the drywall in place and fasten with drywall screws to the plastic ties or to quadlock FS panels which offer a continuous fastening strip. All other sheet or plank material can be mechanically fastened in a similar way. For heavy duty fastening, please refer to the product manual. For below grade walls, the management of subsurface groundwater is a critical element of a proper overall water management plan for any building. There are several ways to protect your walls from groundwater. One method is by applying one of the many approved peel and stick self-adhesive waterproofing membranes. These membranes should be used if there is ever potential for soils to become saturated and to exert hydrostatic pressure on below grade walls. If recommended, prime the top one foot of the peel and stick and apply according to the manufacturer's installation instructions. Always protect the membrane against backfill materials. 
A second application of a dimpled drainage sheet will promote free drainage to the collection system installed at the bottom of the footing. If waterproofing is not necessary and only damp proofing is required, Quadlock still recommends that you install at least two feet of peel and stick at the bottom overlapping the footing. Proper perimeter drainage must be installed. Before backfilling, you must test drainage and repair any damage done to it during construction. Cover exposed areas of basement walls with a one-step stucco or other compatible parging material. Most common exterior cladding systems are compatible with quadlock walls. Exterior finishes including, but not limited to, lap siding, metal, stone, and brick can be screwed to the recessed plastic ties or to the plastic fastening strips in the quadlock FS panel. Local regulations may require a rain screen, which can be provided by fastening wood or metal strips to the exterior of the building. Cementitious or acrylic stucco can be applied directly to the quadlock panels and may qualify the building as a non-combustible structure. A list of approved stucco systems is provided in the product manual. Contact the Quadlock Technical Department for additional assistance.